All right, yesterday we did a lesson over law of cosines, and today we're going to do a lesson over law of sines. Both of these sets of formulas are for finding missing side and or angle measures from a given triangle that's not a right triangle. Yesterday when we did law of cosines, that was for situations where we had two sides given and the included angle between them, side angle side, or where we had all three sides given to us. So law of sines works best in situations where we have one side and two angles, so angle side angle or side angle angle, or we're given two sides and the angles opposite one of them is known, side side angle. And what you have here is these formulas that say if you set up a ratio with the sine of an angle to its side length, the value of that ratio is equal to the same setup for the other angles inside. So sine of A over A is going to give you the same value as sine B over B. It's going to give you the same value as sine of angle C over side C. And remember yesterday we talked about how the capital letters represent angles, the lower letters represent side lengths, and they are the corresponding angles and sides are opposite of each other. And we're going to be using this property, um, this relationship to solve for the missing values of each triangle in these examples. So in this first example, we are given two sides, A and B, I'm sorry, two angles, A and B, and one side, A. And it says to solve the following triangle, meaning we need to find all the missing things. So if I have angles A and B, I need to find angle C. If I have side A, I need to find sides B and C. So I'm going to do, I'm going to work through example one for you and then ask you to pause the video and do ex the other two examples on your own before you compare them with my work. So I'm going to start by finding angle C first. I feel like that would be the easiest thing to do because since I'm already given two angles, I just need to subtract those off from 180. And that's going to give me 80 degrees for angle C. Now I'm going to move to find the other sides. I have one side A. I'm going to just start with finding side B next. Now even though this looks like a one long formula with three pieces and two equal signs, remember that we don't have equations that have two equal signs. You, you're just picking two of the things and making an equation with them. You're going to do either the A information equals the B information or C information equals A or B equals C or something like that. And what you're doing is setting up what we call a proportion, um, two ratios set equal to each other. So if I'm looking for side B, I know I'm going to have to set up this ratio right here at a minimum, sine of angle B over side B. And we know what B is, angle B, it's 60. So I'm going to set this up sine of 60 over B. Now I can set that equal to a ratio of the C information or a ratio of the A information. And the way you decide is, well, what other given information do you have? And we have both, we have an angle for C, but not a side. So if I were to set up this ratio, I would end up with another unknown and I'd have two variables and that wouldn't be helpful. But I do have both pieces of the A information. I have the angle and the side. So I'm going to set up a ratio with that. So sine of angle A, and angle A is 40, over side A length, which we know is 4. And we're going to use cross multiplying to, or the butterfly method to solve this proportion. This is going to save us a little bit of writing. If you multiply across this way, that's going to give me 4 times sine 60. Multiplying across this way gives me B 
times sine 40. And then to solve for b, so here's b, and I just need to get it by itself. Right now it's times sine 40. So I'm going to divide both sides by that. So this cancels here, leaving me just b. And then on my calculator, I just need to do 4 times sine of 60 over sine of 40. And so that is going to give me 5.389 units, whatever the units are. And now I'm going to find side C. Um, and I'm going to set it up the same way I did here. Um, angle C information over variable C. And remember at the very beginning we found that angle C was 80. So sine of 80 over C. Now the ratio that I set up for this right side of my equation, I can use either my B information or my A information because now I have both parts of B. I have the side B and the angle B and I already had both parts of A. Now, I feel like the best practice here is to use the A information because it's been given to you and you know it's correct. If you used the B information, now what would happen if you got this value wrong? You would then be using the wrong information over here in this new equation. So it, you know, if you're super confident in your answer here and you ninja to that problem, go ahead and use it over here. But it's a, I think it's a best practice to just stick with this A information because you know that it is correct. All right, so there is my setup, and I'm just going to multiply across here. If you want to know why we can do this shortcut multiplying for a ratio, just let me know in class. I'd be happy to go over it with you. I think I explained it to second period today, but I don't think I explained it to first. So if you want to know, just come to me and we'll talk about it. So now C equals 4 times sine 80 over sine 40. Um, that's just a little bit of clickety-clackety on your calculator. And you get 6.128. All right, so what I want you to do is pause your video. And you have enough information now to do all of example 2 and all of example 3 by yourself. Take a few moments to try that and then come back and see my work and my answers. Okay, here is my work for those two problems. Uh, pause your video, check yourself before you wreck yourself on those problems, and then we are going to do the word problem on the back. So take a minute before I work this problem and just pause your video and read. I want you to read the problem and I want you to take any given information and label the drawing with that given information. Okay, here's my given information labeled in the picture and then I'm going to identify my sides and angles as A, B, and C. So that way, when I go to set up my proportions, I'm clear about which things go together. Um, these two sides are already A and B, so I'm going to call. You too, thank you. I'm going to call this one C. And then that makes angle A the 79 degrees. So angle A is here at 79 degrees. Angle B is this 34 degrees. And then angle C would be up here where that island is. So this first question is asking me to find the length of bridge A. So bridge A, I have labeled lowercase a. And I know its angle. So I'm going to set up the A ratio, which would be sine of 79 over lowercase a for the side. And that needs to be set up to another ratio where I have sine of an angle over its side. Um, the other angle I know here is this 34, but I don't know the side that goes with it. 
So it wouldn't do me any good to set up that ratio because I would just have another variable. So then I can go try C. I know what the C side is, and I don't know its angle. So it kind of feels like I'm stuck, like I don't have two pieces of information that go together. However, in the case of the C side, I can find its angle that goes with it because I know that the three angles of the triangle add up to 180, and I have these two. So I'm going to start by finding angle C for just a second. So we're going off on a little side quest here. So that's going to be 180 minus 34 minus 79. And that's going to give me 67 degrees. So now I can use the C information. I'll put sine of angle C. Angle C is 67 over the length of side C which is 1.56, and that came from the problem. So I'll solve this proportion by multiplying across the angles diagonally. So 1.456 times sine of 79 equals A times sine 67. I'm solving for A, so I need to get it by itself. So I'm going to divide by sine of 67. These cancel. Math happens on my calculator, and this simplifies to 1.553 miles. And then I want you to pause your video and do part B. What will the length of bridge B be? Here is my work. Pause the video, check that out, and then when you do your practice sheets, your key is in your Google Classroom.